seeking first in the morning the kingdom of God not your cell phones not your Instagram not our Facebook mm -mm. seeking first in prayer and thanksgiving and telling him Lord I thank you for waking me up this morning that's the first thing that every believer Christian should do for breathing there are people that went to bed last night they were not able to wake up this morning but he says seek ye first if you are able to breathe and got up this morning the first thing you should do is to say Lord I thank you for I can move my hand oh I could see again I can breathe I'm seeking you to say thank you for yet another beautiful day then I can ask you for whatever that I need to ask you for the day he says and his righteousness when you do that he said there is something that happens when you do that and he says all these things shall I'll be added unto you all these things that means every other thing you're believing God for that day shall be added unto you when you seek him first as you take your seat tell somebody seek God first tell somebody seek God first the harder the heat the bigger the blessing I said the harder the heat the bigger the blessing the more the enemy hits you hard it means that he's trying to make you abort the blessing that's why a lot of people aborted their destiny aborted their blessing before it was true I'm not about to abort my blessing because I'm almost there something is about to take place in my life I'm almost there I'm almost there to give birth to this blessing I've been carrying for so long yes the man of God prayed yes I was prayed upon yes I was anointed but I'm not seeing the blessing come I'm not seeing the miracle come I'm not seeing the healing come but the Lord said wait 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 it's not time to give up because you are almost close they left you hanging they thought they have abandoned you but God disconnected you because they dream no good for you God separated you because he's trying to reconnect you with destiny and purpose somebody say talk to me talk to me talk to me Sometimes God will cause a separation. Woo! I feel the anointing this morning. Sometimes God will cause a, a separation. He does it for a purpose. He does it for a purpose. Don't try to hold on, on to everything. Just like a pregnant woman. You can't try to please everybody. You can't try to hold on to everybody. That's why sometimes they spit anyhow. They eat anyhow. They're so weird in everything. Yes, the weirder I look, it means that God is doing something on the inside of me. I don't have to do things like you do because what I'm carrying is different from what you're carrying somebody said peppers oh. uh, this morning I've come with a message to let you know that if you made it this far and you didn't quit they fired you they say you're no good in this job they pushed you out and you're wondering how am I going to pay my bills how am I going to take care of this but the more the devil locks this door God says I did it for a purpose because what was meant for you was not in this place what I mean for you is in this other place so I had to cause a disruption to cause something to happen so I can bring you into a place of fulfillment when one door closes the Bible says that weeping man door for a night you have cried all through in the night time but joy cometh in the morning I don't know who I'm talking to this morning your laughter is about to show up your laughter Laughter is about to show up. Somebody is about to smile again. Somebody is about to dance again. Somebody is about to testify again. Somebody is about to say, thank God I didn't quit. Thank God I'm still here. Thank God I'm still making it by the grace of God. Oh, my God. Let me break something down. When you come to a season of preparation, a lot of things happen. I used to wonder sometimes. When I was a kid, growing up, I'm the first of the family. The mom would come up pregnant. I'm like, ah, ah, when did this happen? And then I would ask mom, what did you eat? As a baby. I'm like, your own food is different because your stomach is, you know, ask a lot of questions, you know. I was a kid at the time. And mama would say, it's not the kind of food you should understand now. I said, what do you mean? We ate fufu. 
How come my own stomach is not this big? We ate all this. How come you're looking at it? Mom will just try to tell us something. But I noticed something as we were growing up. But mom, at a certain place in her life, the food we're eating, she won't eat the firm food with us. She said, I want this one. I want that one. I'm like, what is wrong with you? How come you won't eat this? So she said, no, I don't want to eat this because if I eat it, I'll throw up. There are some people in your life that God will get you to a place that will cause you to throw up and God will detach you away from them. And I learned a lesson in that. That it, 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 it makes you puke. When you get into that season, don't fight yourself. Just go according to how God is leading you. And sometimes I see my mom be spitting on the floor. She'll be spitting on things. I'm like, why, why are you spitting? She said, there's something that's making me uncomfortable on the inside. It's not making me comfortable. And then I realize sometime when the blessing is about to come, you begin to feel uncomfortable about some certain things. You begin to get irritated about some certain things. Some things begin to make you feel like just forget it. Oh no. And that's why a lot of people are not able to carry to full term. And some people are bought it too early. And they, because they're not well you are able to carry it. And then sometimes mom don't sleep the same way she sleeps. She sleeps sideways. Because what she's carrying she's got to protect it. I come to talk to you that in this season there is something you got to protect. You don't have to tell everybody your dreams and your vision. You don't have to tell everybody your business. You got to protect it. You don't have to do it anyhow. You don't have to move anyhow because what you're carrying is precious in your preparation season. God has a way of separating things. He makes you uncomfortable. The reason why he makes you uncomfortable is nothing else is because you're carrying a big blessing on the inside of you. What is that thing that God has put on the inside? What is that promise? God has said to you, you are going to make it. Discouragement will come in. And so I asked mom, I said, wow, this is so, and I grew old, I started to learn something and God started to teach me about preparation. When a woman is pregnant or when someone is carrying something. And I learned that also when mama, at a certain time too, when I got married, I said, mom, I saw the same thing I saw. With my mom, I'm seeing the same thing too. Mama don't like to eat fufu a lot. I'm the fufu guy. But when mama was pregnant, oh my God, fufu in the morning, fufu in the afternoon, fufu at night. I'm like, baby, what's wrong with you? You eat too much fufu. What, what, you, what's wrong? At the early stage, I did not understand that mama was pregnant at the time. I said, ah. then some little thing, mama would get upset. I'm like, babe, even when I cough, why are you coughing like that? When I sneeze, why are you sneezing? Everything I do, there's always a problem. God will bring you into a place when you start to feel hormone imbalance. It means that there is something that he's putting, he's planting on the inside. You only need a spiritual understanding to know that when God is getting you closer to a miracle, he changes your hormones, he changes your balance, he changes your understanding. Sometimes you begin to detest some things. Sometimes some things begin to irritate you. Why? Not because you are bad, but because he's put something that is unique on the inside of you. Ideas, gifts, grace, glory, wisdom. He planted in the inside of you. That's why sometimes when you talk, the Bible says, be not too quick to speak. Be slow to speak, but quick, quick to hear. The reason that is so you can process. In processing, because you're trying to guard what God has put on the inside. A lot of us have aborted our dreams before time. Why? Because we didn't realize that in our preparation season, the enemy is going to try you the hardest. He's going to hit you the hardest at your preparation season. So you give up that baby. So one day I went to pray for this young woman at the hospital. And she was crying. I said, what happened? She said, the baby I carried. I was hoping I was going to give birth to that baby. I was excited about it. But didn't realize that the baby was dead in my womb. Some of us have carried a blessing that is dead. Have not been able to come out. The blessing got stuck. Why? 
we need to break down and see what the enemy has done there are some of you that are overdue but the baby have died on the inside of you because you allowed some things and you ignorantly do some things and so the baby died because of something and I said what happened and she said because the doctor said I never came for regular checkup they would have detected that on time she said I never came for regular checkup I was busy doing all my things trying to hustle make money and all of that so I never went to the doctor for a regular checkup that's the reason why some of you are in church because you are doing what I call a regular checkup the Bible said create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me when the right spirit comes something is changing when you hear the word of God something is changing something is transforming you are having hope light and love even when the war hits you you come to church you are lifted by the word of God the Bible say faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God you are doing a regular checkup and the pastor and the prophets are praying for you laying hands on you letting you know that you are carrying something it's not time for you to give up you are almost there to keep but yes they said what they said concerning you yes they looked down on you yes they belittled you yes they spoke against you but it doesn't matter I got to carry this baby to full term I'm not about to abort this baby right now I'm not about to give up on myself because I know what God spoke concerning me somebody say he's talking to me he's talking to me and so she had a she had that baby and the, the baby I think they call it stillbirth or what stillborn the baby came but it was still dead or function I'm talking about preparation on the inside the pain is intense right now some of you are going through it Pastor, I don't feel like I'm going to church today for real, man. Pastor, I'm tired, man. Oof. Ooh, I'm about to quit this job. Ooh, I'm about to curse somebody. Oof, I'm tired. The pressure is intense. The pressure is intense. The devil hits you the hardest when you're about to win. It's intense. You know why? Because you are almost there. People will rise against you at the place of work is intense uh, your family will rise against you it is intense uh, it's like it's only me what's going on you're still praying to weaken you so you quit completely uh, sometimes some of you feel like, I just want to run away from everybody but it's intense uh, everything pisses you off is intense uh, it's intense because what you're carrying is intentional uh, what you're carrying is intentional made by Yahweh himself uh, what you're carrying is not man made it's made by God that's why people will reject you that's why people will say all kind of things but when you are waiting in your preparation season it takes time the pain gets more intense in your preparation season it gets more intense am I talking to somebody it gets more intense in your preparation season my assignment this morning is to encourage somebody that if you made it from January look back just look back hmm where he picked you from and where you are now and look back what you fought <laughs> you fought those anxiety depression you fought everything it's not like it stopped the bills don't stop coming but you're not homeless <laughs> Somehow God always makes a way when you seek him first the kingdom and his righteousness he makes all things now how he makes all things happen to you is not known to me but he does it somehow I don't know how I'm going to take care of this bill I don't know how I'm going to pay this I don't know how I'm going to do that but he makes a way anyhow he makes a way where there seems to be no way at the moment where I trust God God touches people's lives to be a blessing somehow he grants you favor that's where the grace of God shows up like I said on Sunday the grace of God shows up in the place of weakness I can't pray the grace of God shows up some of you probably opened your Bible this week and you read it. And while you are reading the first verse, one sweet sleep just came in. How many of you, has it happened to you? When you open your Bible to read, that's when one sleep, oh my God, that sleep is so sweet, even with all the noise everywhere. The sleep, I'm telling you the truth. You have all the time 
on Monday then when it comes to Tuesday close to prayer time we had to fight that enemy in my family Tuesdays and Thursday Bible study on Thursday that's when I'll be looking for a strong coffee to even with the coffee I'll be like oh Lord give me strength because I'm tired right now I want to sleep then after Bible study or prayer my eyes are wide open have you wondered why you're able to watch a movie three hour movie non-stop non-stop but when it's time for prayer or to read your Bible just one chapter man there was one sleep that took me one day I put the Bible here I'm confessing my sin you guys are righteous people you know you know I'm, I'm telling you the truth I opened the Bible the Bible and mama looked at me she said oh man this man is tired he's not tired though if I keep that Bible another stand will come in I won't be able to read again the reason is because the enemy knows that there is power in God's word and he doesn't want you to look at it and that's why you see when you seek him he empowers you and his righteousness and every all, all the things will be added to you I'm glad that I'm not the only one and so if we're able to win this moment of waiting from January till now that God has taken care of everything it's not by might nor by power but by the spirit says God that you made it to this point here it's not by your own power it's not by your own doing somebody was praying for you somebody was interceding for you even when you felt helpless even when you felt like throwing the towel somehow somehow you made it through to this time don't quit don't quit don't quit all I can tell you right now don't quit yes we go through challenge but he said I will never leave you nor forsake you I will never give you stone instead of bread that's the God we serve that's the God we serve that's the God I serve. Oh my goodness. The challenges are there, but the challenges comes to prepare you. Are you listening to me now? The challenges come to do what? To prepare you. To prepare you. What are the challenges? The struggles. The pain. How do I get prepared? Mentally. Because they will poke you. Why? So you can give it up. Give up the gift. Give up the ministry. Give up what God has spoken concerning you some of you are great authors great writers you're creative in your thing in your ability some of you have a genuine love genuine love <laughs> I have every right to quit I have every right to say I can't be here I don't want to be here but no the more you hear that word that's the more reason why you should want to do it that's the more reason why you should want to go I don't feel like praying but you know what if I don't feel like praying that's the more reason why I should get up and say something I don't feel like giving that's the more reason why I should keep on giving I don't feel like going to church that's the more reason because God is preparing you in the season where you are about to give but so you don't quit on the glory of God Am I talking to somebody? Let me give you a few things and I'll close as I come to conclusion. Your preparation season is very, very key in this month. In this month, your preparation season is very, very key. So you need to watch out what God and how God is taking you. In your preparation season, I'm going to give you a few key or a few points. How to prepare. One, you must be ready. Somebody say you must be ready. You must be ready if you're not ready you can get it Matthew chapter 24 verse 44 you don't have to turn in there it says therefore you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect you must be ready at all time because things are gonna happen you must be ready and that's why I encourage everybody to get on Bible study on Thursdays because we're learning something man I mean, Bible study has, has been so wonderful. We're learning about different things from Genesis to Revelation. We're studying the scriptures. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want to be ready. Because somebody's going to meet you one day and ask you some questions. You'll be like, um, let me call Pastor James. I'm sleeping. I love to sleep my sleep. I'm sleeping. So that's why you must be ready at all times. In the morning, it's a 
get ready in the afternoon get ready at noon time get ready at night time get ready that's why he says seek ye first when you seek me first you're preparing for war when you seek him first you're preparing for your tomorrow when you seek him first you're preparing for the battle ahead you got to seek God because the enemy is waiting for you out there but until you're ready with the armor he said put on the whole armor of God being ready for the battle ahead of you you must be ready as you prepare because there's something God wants you to fight God is not going to come up from heaven and fight your battle but he wants you to be ready while you're here on earth because he has given you the power and the dominion tell somebody get ready get ready get ready get ready get ready get ready have you ever received a phone call one time you woke up in the morning the first phone call you received just made you sad the whole day that's why I turn off my phone when I go to sleep you can call me all you want. Thank God you have, uh, we have voicemail. Uh, one of my cousins in Africa called me one time. And he's from the country. He know nothing about voicemail. He don't know nothing about that. Now we know when you turn your cell phone off, right? When people call you, go straight to the voicemail. And it was a female voicemail. The voice thing that come up. Please leave your message after the town. Blah, blah, blah. My cousin called. This guy is real country. Real, real country guy. When he called, he rang. And in Africa, calling to the United States is really expensive. For somebody to call you, for those of you that know what I'm talking about. And for somebody to call you for one minute, they're paying a lot of money for that. And so when he called, the answering machine picked it up. And it was a female voice that said, leave a voice message. And he hung up and he died again. Then when he died, he went to the voice message. He did not realize that the voice message was recording. And it wasn't somebody or anybody who was talking to him. And all he kept saying was, Madam, Madam, Madam is me. Can you please tell your husband that I'm the one? You're eating my credit. My credit is going. My data is going. He thought he was talking to Mama. He said, ah, why is this woman quiet on me? She spoke and she will not respond. And then I'm saying, Madam, please, my credit is going. Give it to your husband. I want to talk to your husband. And so when I heard the voice message, I laughed. And so when I called him, I was asleep. And we have time difference. There's six hours ahead of us. Six hours. Right now, it's maybe about five o'clock right there, five in the evening. So when I called him, I said, why were you calling me? He said, bro, I called you and your wife was speaking to me. I didn't understand what she was speaking. And then I was telling her to give the phone to you and she would not pass the phone to you. I said, no, mama did not answer the phone. He said, no, I heard it. I heard her voice. I heard, in fact, I called twice. I heard her voice. He tried to argue with me. I said, no, that was an answering machine. He said, answering what? What is answering machine? He said, you guys in America are very funny. So somebody will answer your phone for you. Is it not your phone again? You gave your phone to somebody. Why would somebody be answering your phone? <laughs> so just imagine that kind of scenario. And so I asked him, I said, when did you call? When I looked at the call log and everything. This man called me around 3 a.m. When this man was sleeping with and talking to Jesus in heaven. Imagine me answering that phone. And I asked him one question. I said, what were you calling me for? He said, no, I was just calling to hear your voice. Huh? just to hear my voice you called me at that hour I said to him at that time I was sleeping and the funny thing he said to me was why were you sleeping at that time he was talking based on the African time he said why were you sleeping I said he, he said are you sick I said no I wasn't sick I said that's the night time here that's when I, he said why is your own time different from our own time we need to change our own time see I'm talking to somebody who is ignorant and you know what at that moment in time, if I had answered that phone in the morning, that would have aggravated my spirit. It would have messed up my whole day. I won't be able to go back to sleep to rest again. And then if it messes everything that has to do with me that day. Because when I wake up in the morning, the first thing we do, we have devotion, we pray, we, before we move on, we turn on our phone, before we begin to see some things. And sometimes on the weekend, I don't even answer some time on the phone because I take that time to prepare for Sunday. So you must be ready at all times. You must be consciously ready, ready in your mind, ready in everything at all, because the enemy is going to use all kinds of things to try to poke you. And when he pokes you, he messes up your day. 
when you go to work, get ready. Pray before you go to work. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Somebody's going to say something to you. Nasty. Mm -mm. And if you are not ready for it, you're going to give them the peace of mind. I'm telling you because it's happened to me. My supervisor poked me one day like that, but I thank God that I covered myself because my African nature would have come out. <laughs> oh boy, if you try this thing with me today. <laughs> but he was just doing his thing and then I would just go cool. And I was like, well, whatever, you can have it your way because I was ready. I was ready for it. Husband, wife, friends, relations, people, well, they will poke you. But when you're covered with the garment of being ready, I got this. And when they are poking you, you're covered with the garment. It's like, ah, people will be wondering, why am I doing this? And this person is not moving. They're like, well, yeah, I don't care. Because you are prepared and you're ready. Am I talking to somebody here? So number one is ready. Number two, you must be aware. Somebody say, you must be aware. I just have a few points. You must be aware. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 verse 15, it says, be aware. Be aware of false prophets. You must be aware. That means open your eye. You must know. Be aware of false prophets because we have them everywhere this day. We have them everywhere. False prophets. I call them the gurus. People that will speak as if they are speaking from the source of God when they are speaking. You know, unfortunately, people these days carry EGE. They just want to go to where a pastor will tell you this, this is a. This, 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 this. I believe in prophetic. This is a prophetic church. How many of you here that God has spoken to that never came to pass? How many of you? that God spoke to. Everything God spoke to. We've had cancer healed in here. How many of you know that? So the breast cancer, cervical cancer, God delivered, not by my own power. It's not this kalu kalu people do. The tangible power of God made manifest in this place. We had people in this place whom the doctors have said you will never conceive, never have a baby. But by the grace of God through power of prayer, through power of prayer, we're able to carry their babies and give birth to the tangible miracle baby. Some of them might not be here. We've had a lady who came here and testified, was in coma for almost a month. Dead, brain dead. She came here and testified. Some of you know the lady I'm talking about. The doctor said even if she came out, she would not be able to walk. She would be vegetable completely. She would not be able to drive. She drove herself to church. She came here and, and testified. So he said, be aware. Be aware means be aware of your environment. Be aware. Being aware means you, uh, you can't just connect with everybody just because you're so nice. No. Be aware of your environment. There are certain places you shouldn't go. Be aware because you're carrying something. A pregnant woman can't just go everywhere and anyhow. A woman who is pregnant with something can't eat anyhow. You must be aware of your environment. Be aware of your association. Be aware. You can't just go be a pregnant woman. You're dancing anyhow. You're jumping and falling on the ground. No, be aware. Be aware. Don't do those things that some more people are doing and say, oh, the grace of God is going to carry me. You are about your baby. No, you are about your baby. I see a pregnant woman that is good to exercise. I saw her at the gym. Ah, this woman was carrying a bigger weight than I'm carrying. And her stomach is big. I said, the devil is it. Is this a real pregnancy? Sometimes the Lord, as he's preparing you, you got to be aware of what you do. So that you don't lose what God has put on the inside of you. You must be aware of your environment. Be aware of the season. That's another key word. Be aware of the season. Your season is very important. When you are aware of the season, when the season comes, learn how to maximize your season. Maximize the season. When winter comes, you maximize the season of winter. When summer comes, you maximize the season of summer. So you must be aware. You must keep watch. Somebody say, keep watch. You must keep watch. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 24 verse 42 says, Therefore, keep watch because you do not know what day your Lord will come. Keep watch. Keep what? Watch. I watch my surroundings. I watch. Wherever you go, watch. Keep watch. Don't just leave your purse whenever we go out to eat with mama. I tell her, put your purse next to you. Don't keep it behind. Keep watch. Because some people are there to just hijack your things. Oh yes. Not everybody that smile is good. We had the back to school yesterday. Some people were trying to thief, to steal. That's the African part of me that just came out. They're trying to steal. 
Oh, yeah. We had a back to school yesterday. Some family were trying to steal things, you know. It would be, this is a church. Oh. Church. They entered a church. And ma, thank God for mama. Mama was keeping watch on everybody. She recognized one of them. She said, woman, I know you. You can't do this in here. The woman said, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. the woman went out. Mama said, go and bring the one you took. She wanted to take more than what she was supposed to be given. So when mama caught her red-handed, he said, ah, I saw you. He said, no, this one is, 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 is for my son. It's for my son. It's for, for I know the person. But I said, go and bring the other one. When she came back, mama said, you see, she never returned back. She left. And they had other kids with them. They put a lot of kids. They were coming to pick some things that they already got. Little kids. We saw all of that on camera. And mama was looking at them saying, look, you can't touch this. You can't, because you're trying to steal. Leave. So you got to keep watch. When you go to an environment, you're carrying something. Keep watch of your environment. Keep watch. Because it's important. And God will fulfill what he has said concerning you. Number four, you must be alert and prayerful. That's the last one. Somebody say alert and prayerful. You must be alert and prayerful. Alert means anytime you get up in the morning, pray. I don't leave my house and we don't leave this place without putting the alert, the alarm in here. Okay? You must stay alerted and prayerful. The Bible says pray all what? The time. Pray without what? Ceasing. That's what keeps you going. I'm telling you, there are crazy stuff that's happening out there. Man, we got to keep on praying. Keep on praying. As I'm driving, I'm praying. I'm listening to worship. I'm praying. I'm thanking God for my life. I'm praying because prayer is the key. So it takes prayer to preserve. It takes you being alert all the time because the enemy is rowing like a lion, seeking whom to devour in your preparation season. Keep your eyes open. Stand up on your feet. Lord, we thank you for your love, your grace, your sufficiency. You are worthy in my life. You're worthy in our lives. It's not because we are so righteous, Lord. Help me to carry through my blessing. Help me to carry through the baby, the pregnancy, the spiritual pregnancy, supernatural pregnancy that I'm carrying, the miracle, the healing, the deliverance, the breakthrough, the financial opening, the business idea, the ministry that I'm carrying. Give us time to wait on you as we prepare. The pain may be so intense, but I will wait. The pain may be so unbearable, but I will wait. The pain may feel so uncomfortable, but I will wait. I will wait upon the Lord because he will renew my strength. Strength is found in the place of waiting, in the place of preparation. Strength is found. Ideas is going to be poured down on you. I prophesy over you in the name of Jesus that those that have written you off, they will come back to celebrate with you in the name of Jesus. Those that have laughed at you will come back to laugh with you. Those that have rejected you will be looking for your autograph in the name of Jesus. Those that have said you will not amount to anything will come from you, will come to you to borrow from you. In the name of Jesus, those that has looked down on you will look up to you.